Hi everyone, I'm Mom Sandra. Um, as you can see, Ben is not with me today. Uh, it's been uh, a rough couple of weeks for Ben, and I say for Ben uh, because he's the one that's really struggling. Although as his mom, um, and for people that are just tuning in for the first time, uh, Ben has a substance use disorder and uh, we usually do videos together sharing our experiences, what works for us, what doesn't work. Uh, today I thought I would address, address the loved ones, the ones who have uh, somebody with a substance use disorder in their family, whether it's their son, daughter, mom, dad, uh, anybody. Uh, as we know, addiction is a family disease. And like I said, the last couple of weeks have been really uh, challenging for Ben mostly. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to lie, it was tough for me. Although I have been using all my tools in my tool belt to get me through. And I'm just going to give you a snapshot because it's not my story to tell what Ben's been going through, except that um, a couple of weeks ago, uh, for those that don't know, Ben has been on methadone now for about a, a year. And uh, with methadone, there are really strict rules. You have to get it daily. If you miss three doses in a row, then you can't get your methadone. And if you really need it, you have to go to the hospital. Well, Ben um, went on the third day to get his methadone and he couldn't get it for whatever reasons and he still had a few days before going to the clinic and he refused to go to the hospital. So, you know, it's tough for me to watch this because I know um, there's withdrawal, there's sickness and we had that just a few weeks ago, about a month ago where Ben um, didn't get his methadone for a while and he was dope sick. So there was that and there was a couple of other things. So I'm just gonna share how I dealt with it. Uh, Cause I know that there are many loved ones out there uh, in a very similar situation as myself, where they have someone in their life that has a substance use disorder. So um, Ben, you know, went all week without his methadone. And what normally happens is that he gets his withdrawal. And uh, finally, the Friday came around to go back to the clinic and uh, he wanted me to go in. Well, I don't know if he wanted me to go into his appointment with him, but I did go uh, with him. And, uh, you know, during the week, I'm like, Ben, are you feeling withdrawal? It's like, no, I'm just getting my hands on whatever I could use. So as a mom, knowing the crap that's out there, Ben was using whatever he could get his hands on to stop him from getting sick. Well, Friday comes around and usually I will pick him up Friday morning to pick him up to go to the clinic and he's not answering the phone and I'm like, okay, well, it's his. So what do I do? I stay in my own lane. I did not go to his house knocking on his door saying we have to go get his methadone. I just let things happen the way they need to happen for Ben. Um, I don't try to fix it. I don't try to make things happen. I didn't uh, force him to go to the clinic. It's his. Uh, so I, I thought, okay, I do wait my usual phone call Friday morning, no answer. So I thought, oh, well, you know, he went a week without his methadone. Um, it's his choice what he wants to do. I'm going to do me. So what did I do? I thought, well, you know what? I'm going to take this time. Not First of all, not getting in my head because we know that our thoughts can go to really dark places. Um, but instead, I chose to do me. I thought, okay, you know, Christmas is coming. I'm going to get my Christmas decorations out. Um, I distracted myself. I did whatever I needed to do for myself. Well, lo and behold, about three hours later, I get a call from Ben, and it was a three-way call. He had his counselor on the phone, and apparently he was getting really sick and he wanted to get his methadone and they asked if I was okay to drive him. And I said, well, if that's what you want, um, I didn't have any major plans. So I thought, okay, I'll take them. But the reason I bring this up is because he chose to go, not, I didn't say you have to go, you need to do this. You know, he chose to go. So, and he asked for help to do that. So. I picked him up, brought him to the clinic, and you know, it's really scary because we talk about fentanyl. One thing I did learn is that now there's another type of fentanyl, it's called carfentanyl, which apparently is a lot stronger than regular fentanyl. 
and uh, it's not approved for human consumption. I think uh, I haven't really looked into it, but from what I hear, it's like it's used as a tranquilizer for large animals like elephants and hippos. So number one, that scares me because of the crap that's out there. But I'm going to go back to what did I do? Well, you know what? Because he missed uh, weeks uh, worth of methadone, uh, he, the doctor dropped the prescription down to less than half of what he was normally getting. And that's fair enough. That's part of the rules. They can't just put it back up to whatever he was at. So the following week, you know, Ben was doing Ben and I was doing me in that um, I didn't check to see, are you getting your methadone? Are you doing this? Are you doing it? Because it's his. It's not mine. I, I am not going to compete with the addiction. I'm not going to compete with the drugs um, because there's no competing. Uh, when, when someone's brain is hijacked from all the drugs um, and that's their only focus, it doesn't matter what I say, what I do. Uh, so I just didn't get in my head. I took time for me. I distracted myself. And I find that every day is different with Ben because I don't know where he's going to be at. So, you know, I always say self-care, self-care. And the reason I say self-care is because I know that things change day to day. And there may be a day where Ben says, you know what, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm tired of living this life. I want help. What can I do? Well, I want to be ready for him for when he is ready. Until then... Um, I could plant seeds, uh, I can make suggestions, but I'm not going to go out of my way to call him daily to say, did you do this, did you do that, did you do this, did you do that, you know. Um, skip ahead, we, you know, the next Friday came around and it's like, I spoke to him the day before, if you want to go to the clinic, let me know. If I call you and you don't answer, I'm not coming to get you. So again, this was this last Friday, I... Uh, said Ben. I called Ben in the morning. There's no answer. And it's like, okay, well, it is what it is. I'm just going to do my thing. Either I go to the clinic and I hang out there for a few hours, or I just hang out at home and do my thing. So I chose to hang out at home. Um, and, you know, eventually he did call me in the afternoon and asked if I could take him. And I'm like, okay, sure. You know, um, I took him to the clinic. And the following day, the Saturday, uh, I was having family over for the first time in two years to celebrate Christmas. Um, and Ben really wants his family around. He really wanted to come. And I set my boundaries in that if you're going to come, you need to take a shower, wear clean clothes, and be clean. I don't want you coming high and just, you know, coming to sleep or whatever. And I made it very clear. Now, when I set those boundaries, I need to be ready uh, for the consequences. The consequences would be not to bring him here for the family gathering. So um, he knew and he really wanted to do it. And so on a happy note, uh, Ben did take a shower. He shaved, he had clean clothes on and he was in pretty good shape. I mean, I don't know. He might have used just before I picked him up. I really don't know. But I go by the behavior and he was OK. So he came um, for dinner and, uh, you know, he saw his cousins and family and had a lovely time. And, um, you know, my message to the loved ones is when you set your boundaries, there are usually consequences for your loved one. And the important thing is that you follow through. You follow through with the consequences. Um, with Ben, the consequence was he wouldn't be coming over and he wouldn't be celebrating with us and having a delicious meal. And um, I had to be okay with not having him here and I was I was okay I was hopeful when I went to pick him up um, and you know he had showered shaved and wore clean clothes and he was in a good mood so uh, we had a great day so you know loved ones I just want to say when thing every day is different you know I can go days without talking to Ben 
Uh, but then the next time I talk to him, he's fine and we have a good conversation. Um, you know, so it's important not for myself not to get in my head and go to the dark place. Um, I am now saying no news is good news. If something happened, um, I would get a phone call and I need to be in a good state of mind um, because we know that addiction can be fatal and that is scary. And, um, you know, I believe where there's breath, there's hope and, and there is breath with Ben right now. Today, all is good. So <clears throat> I know for me, I have to disconnect with what Ben does and you know people call it tough love uh, you can call it whatever you want but for me I am going to continue to love him and be there when he asks for help uh, be there for when he's ready for change um, I I'm doing me um, also it's really important that if you are if you have somebody in your life that has a substance use disorder to have the support. Um, during the last few weeks, I have um, a person that I call and um, they are my earth angel and they know my situation and they know Ben and they know uh, that I have the tools. And sometimes I need to be reminded, you have your tools, use your tools. So my tools are self-care, setting my boundaries, following through on consequences, and trying not to fix it. I'm not going to compete with Ben's addiction. I'm not going to compete with the addiction monster. He knows I'm here, and he knows that I'm ready to help him when he is ready for change. Until then, I am going to take care of myself. I'm putting that oxygen max on myself so that I am ready and I am healthy. Um, and Ben knows, he, he quotes things. He goes, I know sometimes the loved ones are sicker than the addict. And it's like, yes, you are correct, Ben. Sometimes the loved ones are sicker than their addicts because we're addicted to our addict. Um, so I am refusing to be addicted to my addict. I am staying in my lane. I am not trying to fix it. I am doing me. I'm taking care of myself. Um, so any loved ones out there, reach out. I'll link you up. I'll link supports to um, support groups for loved ones and also support groups for those that have a substance use disorder. Ah, that's been my last few weeks. Yeah, it's been tough. And yes, I have been taking care of myself. And I know that I'm not as exhausted as I normally would be. Um, so staying in my lane, I still have energy to do me. When I'm not worried and trying to control his life, I still have energy. I, because anybody out there that is dealing with a loved one that has a substance use disorder knows how emotionally draining it can be. Um, that's my video for this week. I know it's been a couple of weeks. I truly thank you all for your support and uh, I wish you all the best. And Remember, where there is breath, there is hope. Take care, everybody. Peace.